Welcome back to Quantum Conversations. My name is Sarah, and I'm so excited to bring you another episode with my co-host, Carrie Bennett. We are really enjoying giving you this show and talking about these topics that seem really complex so that we can help them be a little bit more understandable to the everyday person. I just wanted to remind you to head down into the show notes to make sure you get my free resources and Carrie's free resources. We've both spent a lot of time compiling our favorite list of products, as well as how you can actually implement a lot of these things into your daily life for free using our guides. We also both have amazing courses that you have access to in the show notes as well. And we co-host a course together called Quantum Fertility. We've actually had some quantum fertility babies just born this summer, and we have several quantum fertility pregnancies going on right now where women were told that they were not going to get pregnant. And we have been able to show them the way using these circadian principles and quantum biology. And we're so grateful for this. So make sure you head down to the show notes, check out those resources, check out those courses. And if you are enjoying the show, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, leave us a comment. And if you're listening on the podcast app, please head on over to Apple or Spotify, leave us up to a five-star review. Since we are such a brand new show, we want to make sure that we're getting this message out to as many people as possible. Again, we want to make these concepts of quantum biology and circadian biology understandable and applicable to the everyday person. We want you to pull up a chair, come hang out and enjoy this conversation with me and Carrie and have a fantastic day. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Quantum Conversations. Carrie and I are so happy to have you back and we're just talking about this whole idea of uh, consistency, time, and how long does it take before you can really start to feel the benefits of this lifestyle? And when can you start having slip ups? And I think this was spurred by a question in my private community of someone who had been doing all these things for a month. And she just said, you know, I've been doing all the things you and Carrie talk about for the last month. And it seems like if I miss a sunrise or if I have some crappy food or if I eat late at night or if I do one of these things that, you know, you guys say, try to avoid this, that it messes me up for a, a day or a couple of days. So how long until that stops happening, right? Right. Well, I mean, first and foremost, be I, I'm happy to hear that after one month, you are noticing a benefit to this stuff, yes. right? That's great. That's great. I, I'm th- really thrilled to hear that. Um but then number two is the short answer of how long is it depends, right? Mm-hmm. It depends on a lot of things. So like what level, like how tanked were your mitochondria or what, like your mm-hmm. re- redox, how tanked was that mm-hmm. before you started implementing this stuff? Because it can take a while to recover that. It absolutely mm-hmm. can take a while. Um, do you have any ongoing exposures to things that are inflammatory? So, you know, the last thing or the thing that was hardest for me to, to implement with this lifestyle was non-native EMFs. I think that mm-hmm. was true for most of us, right? Who got yeah. into this. We were finally like, okay, fine. I'll ditch, you know, the, the Wi-Fi. The AirPods. Right, and right. The wearables. The wearables. Yeah, totally. So it's like, that that can be that can be the one of the things that really prevents the needle from moving as fast as you want it to move. Mm-hmm. But I think what Sarah and I have come to the conclusion just with living this lifestyle for as long as we have and working with clients is it's a lifestyle, Mm -hmm. which means that this is the long haul game, right? That you're, that you're looking to implement. So it's not like once you get to the four month mark, everything's going to be perfect. You can have slip ups occasionally. You can go back to like doing, doing, seeing artificial light at night. No problem. It's like, it, it's just, that's not the case with this. We're just trying to coach mm-hmm. you to live in an environment and in a way that's really congruent with nature. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and so I, I don't know, Sarah, the, the story that I was sharing with you before I hopped on this call was, you know, I used to be super, super gluten sensitive, even after I did all the elimination diet and all the mm-hmm. gut healing protocols Critical. and stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. I remember every once in a while I'd be at my in-laws and they were so good at making gluten-free stuff, but every once in a while in a sauce or something mm-hmm. or one ingredient in a dip, right. That they made had some gluten in it. And I would not have a lot of it. I'm certain, but, and I didn't know it was there. And I remember 
I would be doubled over in pain. Mm. I have to go downstairs on their couch, lay down like in the fetal position and try to take a nap because the brain fog would hit. And like, my husband was like, oh, it was gluten again, wasn't it? I was like, yeah, it must've been gluten and stuff. Like it was a, it was a reaction that I, mm-hmm. I was, knew I was going to have. And about 18 months into, you know, doing this circadian stuff, I remember being at a, a, in a location where unbeknownst to me, I had a ton of gluten. Didn't even realize that there was gluten contained gluten in this stuff. And I was just waiting for the, uh oh, I like looked at my husband. I was like, uh oh, you know, like you yeah. might need to like, I might need to go home early because it's the stomach pain. It's the fatigue. It's the diarrhea. It's the days of just feeling like garbage. And it never came. It never came. Wow. And so that's huge, right? Like from eating a tiny little bit and being mm-hmm. down and out for 24 hours, 48 hours to ha- having a lot of it and not having any reaction whatsoever. So I can't tell you where within that frame of time, the change happened. And I would, mm-hmm. I would be able to eat gluten and slip up on eating gluten, but I can tell you it wasn't within the first six months for sure. Yeah, no. So it had to happen somewhere within six months to 18 months of just continuing to implement this lifestyle that somehow my gut recognized that it could have the redox capacity to handle gluten and not have the same reaction that I used to have. Yeah. I agree hundred percent. And like, I wish I could give people like, if you do this stuff for X amount of time, then you can go out and have a wine party or whatever. And you know, stay up all night and feel fine the next day, but I don't know. And I wouldn't do that anyway. Um, but you know, it just, it takes time and it depends on like your health before this, because I get people from all walks of life. I know you do in your community too, Carrie, that have had chronic illnesses for 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. And so for us to say, do all these things for 30 days, and then you're gonna magically um, feel like a brand new person. Yeah, you're probably gonna have more energy, sleep better, feel better, uh, but it may take a lot longer for that person who's had that life, you know, 20 years of chronic illness. And then once that person does start feeling better, because I have countless people in my private membership group that came from a chronic illness, cancer, even, um, Hashimoto's lots of Hashimoto's in my group that they're in live mold. Yeah. A lot of those pathways. Yeah. Yeah. Which are chronic. Like that's a long journey, a long journey. Absolutely. But they're better. Like they're feeling better. And those ladies are the ones who are like, Oh no, I don't want the wine. I don't want the gluten. I don't want to have any artificial, they, they are just like, I feel so good. I don't want to screw up because they have felt so bad for so long. And now they're feeling good. And they're like, I don't want anything to do with blue light at night. I, I, I just don't want anything to do with it. So, you know, they're the ones I think that are a little bit less interested in like, when can I go off plan and have a party? And it, how is it you know not going to affect me? I think it's more the people that are like, you know, if they feel better, they're having more energy, like the lady in my group and she's been doing it a month and she's like, when can I start screwing up and not let it, not have it make me feel like crap for days. And for me, it was definitely, I would say it's about the year mark. Um, and I, you know, I'm not sure because I was pregnant, uh, at six months I was doing quantum and then I got pregnant after about six months of quantum. And then I kept, doing all the things during pregnancy. Cause I'm like, why would I stop doing all this stuff? I'm now I'm pregnant, you know, and I want to pass all this stuff along to my son. But yeah, when I was pregnant, I remember I did eat some stuff that I was just like, I am craving this, you know, whatever. And I know it's not good for me, but I just want it. And e- yeah, eating, uh, the food that I know previously would have made me sick was fine. It was totally, totally fine. And it didn't bother my gut. I didn't lose all my energy. I didn't get sick. I was completely and totally fine. Um, and same thing after pregnancy too. So not having a baby, but, you know, having the sleep deprivation that comes from having a new baby and being up with them and breastfeeding and like all those demands felt completely different in my forties than it did in my twenties. Like it was easier in my forties than it was in my twenties. And I think really it was because I had all these principles and I had been doing all of these things very consistently for a couple of years at that point. And so I think that's, you know, not necessarily the answer people want to hear (laughs) is that it takes time and consistency, 
But I think the good thing and the cool thing is that you want to do this stuff, right? Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. Like we were saying that, you know, it's not like one of those things where, oh, you know, do this P90X challenge and every day right. you do your, you know, your, your super hard workout, you just got to push through it. And, you know, it's like, and sometimes you're like, well, I don't want to, I just worked out for an hour yesterday that hard. I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to do it again today. Like it, for me, if I had all day, let's say weeks on end to just implement these quantum practices even more, I would totally do it. So it's not like I would oh, yeah. slack on sunrise. I would take a longer UVA walk. Oh yeah. I would do a sauna. I do a cold plunge. I do more red light therapy. Like I would, I actually en enjoy these so much that sometimes I'm just like, oh, I wish there were more hours in the day so I could do more of these circadian and quantum health <laughs> practices because yeah. they make me feel so good. It's, it's exactly yeah. how I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, that's me too. If I literally had my choice of, you know, what I could do and my ideal schedule, like that's what I would be doing is just kind of like quantum lifestyle. Like I see some of our friends that, you know, live the nomadic life and live out in the jungle and do all that stuff. I mean, that sounds awesome, but we have kids and husbands yeah. and, you know, businesses. commitments. Yeah. Businesses that we have to keep running. And so we just, yeah, we can't really do that. So we have to figure out ways to do it. Like before, like right before we got on here, I texted Carrie. I'm like, can I come on 10 minutes late? She's like, sure. And I was, cause I had grabbed a little time in my sauna and I went to jump in the cold plunge. And yeah, that's, that's the kind of, you just have to fit it in where you can, you know, and during those 10 minutes I peed and then I went outside and I sat in the full sunlight, right. You know, same thing. And then came back in, I was probably two minutes late for coming back. Cause I, I loved it. So it felt so you good. Knew you I know? wouldn't care. Yeah. I knew you exactly. wouldn't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? These, the fact that your body is responding to this is a good sign because yes. these are just what I consider foundational life practices that we do. Mm -hmm. It's really just getting back to nature. It's such, it's just, it's just reconnecting with how the body wants to live basically. And so that's a good thing that you're, you're responding to that. And I just encourage you to keep it up. Now, mm -hmm. if there's things to quote, if, like, I don't know, would it be interesting to maybe talk about what I would like, if I needed to slack on something, mm, that's a good idea. You know, like just the first year over, I mean, the first I don't know, probably, probably the first three years of doing this. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't miss a sunrise unless my kid was sick or something mm -hmm. along those lines, right? I had mm -hmm. to like cuddle them and, and miss sunrise. I'm not saying I miss sunrise a, a lot now at all, but right. there's times where, and, and perhaps it's the kids getting older, three of them busier. It's mm -hmm. like, oh shoot, I missed the sun. I missed sunrise. It's like seven minutes late and then I'll head out. Right. You mm -hmm. know? And so I'm still really, I'm still really consistent with sunrise and I'm as consistent as I can be with UVA rise. I don't get the luxury to do that every single day, mm -hmm. but I would say I do a UVA walk. That's about 20 minutes or more, mm. four days a week. Yeah. Um, and so, and so if there's one that I would give up more, I'm always really always diligent about sunrise. Now I live in a latitude where the sun never rises earlier than like 555 and never mm -hmm. between 555 and like 830. So not mm -hmm. in a far northern latitude where it's 3 a.m. in the middle of summer, right? So you there's nuance here. But what mm -hmm. I am saying is like for me, I've loved being consistent with sunrise. Sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's driving to school, sometimes mm -hmm. it's in the school parking lot with the window down. You know, there's there's different ways to see the sunrise, but I'm very consistent with sunrise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. And it's like, you got to kind of figure it out. And with having a baby, I haven't been perfect about it because they're having those all nighters, you know, where I'm wearing the blue blockers and I'm doing the best that I can, but babies, they don't give a crap about your, uh, circadian principles and your quantum lifestyle. <laughs> when a baby, when a baby is cutting a tooth or hungry, like you got to attend Ooh, to yeah. them, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> the teething. Yeah. He's only got six teeth. So yes, we're in you got a ways. <laughs> got a ways. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So you can't just, leave, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not, can't just leave him in his room screaming. And so I've got to go in there. I'm going to feed him. I'm going to be with him, rock him, but I have my blue blockers on and yeah. And so there have been I could probably count five days in the last, cause he's 13 months in the last year, five days where I'm just, I sleep through sunrise, but I'm outside at UVA, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I've just spent as much time as humanly possible in UVA. And then the next day 
I can, I will go out for sunrise and try to be there for the whole thing, you know? So it is cumulative. So if you miss sunrise one day, that's, you know, not the best thing in the world, but if you can double up your time the next day, I think it is helpful, um, to kind of re-signal the body. And it's just the consistent exposure, right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Just consistency. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I'd say the other thing that I have been so diligent about because I like it is blocking the artificial light at night. Oh gosh. A hundred percent. You know, I couldn't imagine. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I mean, I'm trying to think like there had to be one time when I didn't bring blue blockers to like a one night hotel room stay. And I'm pretty sure I was like, I'm pretty sure I was like, okay, like what's, what can we do to like, you know, just the bathroom light on, but close the door just to get a little (laughs) bit leaking through the butt, like, you know, whatever it was, (laughs) but that's another one that I've been very um, diligent about because it feels so supportive to me to have those orange tone blue blockers. Now that's not being said, like, when my son's basketball practice ends at nine o'clock in the middle of winter, I'm not wearing the orange tone ones driving to come to go pick him up because no. that's dangerous, dangerous right? Dangerous, yeah. But but I do find that that as soon as I get him back to the house, the orange ones go on and I'm fine, right? And so there is a little bit of wiggle room I think I've been able to develop in there with think with situations like that. But Mm -hmm. that being said, it feels good to me to wear the orange tone blue blockers. And I don't know. I'd love it. If anyone, I don't know. Do do, do we want to ask for comments? (laughs) But um, (laughs) no, we love your comments. If if we we love kind comments. Um, But that being said. (laughs) Nice comments, please. I don't know about anyone else, but like. I don't want to go out at night. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't either. Night. Like, you know, don't, if it's after sunset, like, please don't invite me. Yeah. Right. Like mm, I'll pass. I just, Thanks. I yeah. like it. We just had family over last weekend for a barbecue, right? In the afternoon. It was great. Yeah, right? I like interacting. Time is great. Be outside. Yeah. You better Build believe it. At my, 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 well, I call them night, night glasses. My night, night glasses went on at seven o'clock, right? Yeah. Well, earlier than that, probably six 30. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, you know, there you go. Like I was really, my, my mood was winding down. There. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been fun to have Dr. Sarah stay here at the house because my husband thinks all my stuff is weird, but now there's like two of us in the house and he's just like, he turned, he, when he, the first night she got here, he was like, oh, let me turn some lights on for you. And he was like, she was like, no, 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 don't, don't. <laughs> No, please don't do that. Tonight. <laughs> I know she comes in with her blue blockers on. I wear my blue blockers. My husband's trying to just be like a kind host. He's like, oh, let me turn on some lights for you. And she's like, oh, no, no, please don't do that. No. <laughs> she's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, so funny. So, but he doesn't want to necessarily hear this stuff from me. So it's been cool to have Sarah staying here because she's kind of educating my husband on this stuff. He's like, well, what kind of lights? should we have? And she's like, well, the lights your wife has picked out are really great. (laughs) So maybe stop (laughs) complaining about them all the time. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we actually had somebody here because we do have some can lights in the ceiling. I just, I mean, we've got these huge tall ceilings that you need like ladders to get to them to change the light bulbs out. So I have never changed out the light bulbs in the ceiling because I don't turn on overhead lights after sunset because it doesn't make sense. I mean, even if I had the like good light bulbs, I would still not turn them on after sunset. I never even turn them on during the day because our whole house is like windows, windows. you know, it's so much natural light. And I had somebody here with my daughter because my husband had to go help his parents do something. And I was upstairs and they were downstairs and I came downstairs and like all the lights were on and I was like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a visceral, like, oh my God. Like I just felt this visceral feeling. I was like, oh, let me, sh- we don't. And I like turned the fireplace on. I'm like, we don't do that at night. And like, she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's okay. It's like, okay. Just, it's okay. Just, and like, don't do that. <laughs> and, the, and the thing about it is it's like, it's not like we're trying to be perfectionists no, about it. It just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. That's the thing. I love the fact that I feel like my antenna, that intuitive resonance antenna about what things mm-hmm. feel good and supportive versus what doesn't. I feel like it's only gotten stronger and stronger. Yeah. Yeah. As I've been implementing this stuff. Cause it's like yep. fluorescent lights or overhead lights at night, visceral, you're right. Or TV oh, screen. Oh yeah. Visceral, like visceral. Yep. Um, yep. and, and, and then like, if I do like, there's been times 
oh, kids are sick or something where I probably missed three or four UVA rise walks in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's like, my body's like, oh, I'm yeah, craving that. I it. need, I want to get back out there and do that. It feels so mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just feel like one month into it, I'm really happy that you've been implementing this for one month. That's great. But I really want to hear what it feels like six months from now, mm -hmm. a year from now, because I think you're just going to be on the same trajectory that we, that Sarah and I have been on in terms of our healing and that many countless other clients have been on right. as well, where it just, it just gets better and better and better as you go. Right. I don't know. I feel like I do. I feel like I'm also just reverse aging. It's not like yeah. I feel like I'm, I, I don't have any, you know, symptoms or anything I really need to overcome, but I just feel <laughs> feel better more energy um, better more energy. no crazy <laughs> hormonal issues like I had in my 20s and 30s like right. th that's the craziest thing to me because everyone's like oh you hit your 40s and like everything is gonna go down you're gonna have a really hard time wait you're gonna you know, so I'm like okay well I hadn't been yet um <laughs> I don't know. And I have women that are in 50 in my group that, um, you know, they had started having hot flashes and they implemented the stuff and the hot flashes are gone, you know? And so I, I feel like there's hope as we kind of go through this shifting stage of life for things to keep feeling better, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like that's the case. And I know when people say stuff like that, I put up a mental, I put up a mental wall. Like, you know, I mm -hmm. I don't know. Have you heard it? It's like, oh, just wait till you have kids. Oh, just wait yeah. till you have your second kid. Oh, just, you know, it's like, oh, just wait till you're menopausal. Just wait, just wait, just mm -hmm. wait. And it's like, you know, I choose to put up a mental barrier. I say cancel deflect. I do not need that in my field. Get it out. Get right. it out. No. <laughs> you know? no. So this is funny. I learned you, I learned that. That's a quantum thing, really. Like to kind of like mm -hmm. deflect energy, you know? Yeah. Um, I learned it from my high school volleyball coach. He would have us practice that when we made a, like when we would make a mistake, like let's say we served it into the net or, you know, we shanked a serve or something like that. Um, we would say cancel deflect and just like I get that energy it. out. Right. And like, I'm, I've been using that my whole life as a way to be like, no, I don't need that energy pollute yeah. my field. Thank you very much. Yeah. Keep it out. Keep it out. And so far, right. I mean, I'm feeling great. Yeah. I feel great. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think that's so important. I did that on my fertility journey with everyone saying, oh, in your forties, this, that, and the other. And I just can, you know, try to continue to do it overall with my health because it hasn't been true. Like it was really, really hard for me to lose weight after my daughter. Um, and I was 28 years old, but I hired a personal trainer. I was at the gym every day at 5 AM. I went to Weight Watchers. I did the Weight Watchers meetings where you weigh in every single week. And lost the weight. It took me months and months and months. And I, it was just like this big thing. And with my son, I haven't counted, tracked, haven't been to the gym, haven't done any of that crazy stuff. And I look better now than I did at 28 after losing all the weight for my daughter. Like my body actually looks better somehow. Um, <laughs> And I know that it's because I'm super consistent with my light environment. Um, I don't eat crappy food, but occasionally if I want something, I'll have it. Like, you know, that's Sarah, Sarah Pugh is like, I'm going to follow you around all day with a camera and do, and do what Sarah eats and what Sarah does in a day, because she just is laughing at like the amount of people that email me and message me all day, literally all day long. What do you eat in a day? What's your menu? What do you do? And I'm like, y'all don't copy me. Like you don't. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, we get, we get those questions and comments because people just want, the they, got, they, they want, want a compass, the plan. they want guidance, a yeah, plan. Yeah. The yeah. plan. Yeah. But the that's a good idea. Is, a documentary though. I love that. I'm, I'm all for that. It's like, Sarah wakes up. This is what she does. Sarah, this is what she's doing. Sarah's breakfast. Yeah. But, well, Sarah and I, we meet out on my back porch now. It's funny. Like, cause we both just naturally kind of wake up at sunrise and we're both just out there, you know, like it's, it's just a morning thing. And, you know, my husband's used to me being out there. So now it's the two of us sitting out there and <laughs> kids running in and out. And yeah, it's kind of, it's fun to have a quanta. Like she still is like, we got to get Carrie here. We got to figure out a way to get Carrie here. <laughs> Good luck. She needs to come. She's got to <laughs> come. Sarah, I want, I want to see them both in person for sure. Uh, I know we're starting, we're starting basketball season though. So it's like, there's oh yeah. To get away from that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like, 
your I feel like my light environment, my consistency with all these principles grounding often, because that's another thing. Like Sarah came with uh Dr. Sarah came with us to a, a doctor's appointment for my daughter yesterday to help out and kind of be like another set of ears and eyes. And we are in this like high EMF hospital, lots of blue light. We were in there for two and a half hours. You know, we were talking to the doctor for two hours, which is great that the doctor would give you that much time. But we got down to the lobby and my husband's like, all right, I'm going to go get the car. And Sarah kind of disappeared. And she was like standing out in front of the hospital with, with no shoes on <laughs> on the concrete. He's like, where'd she go? I was like, let me guess. And I like walked right out in front of the hospital and she was standing outside barefoot in front of the hospital. I was like, oh, so smart, yeah. you know, but like we both are just constantly doing little things like that. I know you are too. Just oh, like, yeah. all right, maybe something stressful happened in the house. I'm just going to go outside barefoot, stand in the sun for a second. Or even if it's not sunny, just stand outside barefoot for a little bit. And like we, you just kind of do these little things. And like we always say, they're cumulative. So a minute of grounding here, five minutes here, 30 seconds here, it all impacts your body positively. And it can, it builds up over the course of a day or a week or, you know, it's, it's not like you have to a year. Yeah. You don't have to do, uh, 20 minutes, four times a day, um, exactly at the hours of mm -hmm. that's just not how this stuff works. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, and if, if that fits your schedule and you want to have a routine where it is like that, that's fine. Right. By, by all means, sure. please do it. But in just in terms of implementing this and, and still, you know, living a, a, a busier, a busy lifestyle, it's like, it doesn't have to be perfect. I do say this though, like I, I'll be forthcoming to say, I look back to 15 years ago. Well, now it's probably about 12 years ago that I was feeling my worst. Mm. Um, and all of the things I've changed, like if I were to list it all on a piece of paper, oh, yeah. it'd be, Forget it. it would probably Massive. be 200 things, right. Massive. That I've shifted and Thanks. changed over the course of a decade, right? Like 12 years. Mm -hmm. So like picture that then, like if you, if you recognize that that's just a couple of things. It's not here. A t yeah. Every day. Right. And it just, and then all of a sudden it just, they, they, they start to snowball. You're like, Oh, let me get the fluoride out of my water. Oh, let me use mm -hmm. non-toxic cleaning products. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me be aware of my bed linens. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, like oh, all yeah. these sorts of things 100%. like they adds up over time. But if we were to give these quote unquote protocols to you of the things that we've done over the course of the past decade to heal our bodies, it would be so overwhelming, overwhelming. for the most, for the, for most people, right. It would have been overwhelming for me from the start to be like, mm -hmm. you, you're crazy. You want me to do 200 things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, and I've get people that are like, take me through your day. And I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, I know. <laughs> Like you'll think I'm crazy, number one, and it'll seem like completely not doable and unattainable. And again, I changed little things. Like I think I started with sunrise and I couldn't eat breakfast. Like I, you know, I harp on people and say, you need to eat breakfast. You need to have the protein. You need to do this. But I couldn't, like I would, I just literally felt like complete crap when I mm. ate breakfast because I had no stomach acid in the morning. Same. I just it, adrenal just like, fatigue, cortisol, yeah, all, all that cortisol stuff. Yep. issues because I had literally been fasting most days until midday, drinking black coffee upon waking. Same. You know, three black I, coffees. Oh yeah, oh yeah, at least three, and then it, ounces. Girl, yes, the Yetis, a Yeti full of black coffee. Um, yeah, and then I'd get to the, the studio to teach my yoga class. Right. All, <laughs> like hyper, like, you know, you were in fitness, like, you know, how it you got to like pump everybody up and be the, you know, and that's what I would do for years, for years, I did that. And then my body totally crashed. And yeah. I knew like, I need to reset my leptin. I'm going to have to eat breakfast, but I couldn't for a while. And so I just started with what I could do. And that was go sit outside at sunrise, you know, mm -hmm. and then go take a walk. And yeah. the more that I did that, it didn't even really take that long. The more I did that, I started adding things like, okay, I'm going to have like a hard boiled egg with a lot of sea salt on it, like a nice yeah. crunchy sea salt and grass fed beef know. stick, something smaller, right. but, something really yeah. small that my body could deal with and I could digest. And now I have a much bigger breakfast and it's like a, you know, more of a hearty Love meal it. with good amount of fat and protein. And my body does great with it, but you know, some people, you just have to start with them with the light portion. I used to always, you know, start people with the food thing. And I think the food thing is 
harder. And I even get vegetarians and vegans that are now coming to me since I've changed my name. It's been changed officially <laughs> away from carnivore yogi for the last, I don't know, year and a half now. It's been Sarah Kleiner Wellness. And so I do get vegans and vegetarians that are like, I want to do your program. How important is the animal protein? And I'm like, listen, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I think that, you know, <laughs> you can be optimal with your, you know, uh, amino acids and all these essential things that your body needs with the plant protein. I think that's going to be a lot harder, but you can do the lifestyle stuff and like, and feel tremendously better, you know, um, and maybe improve, you know, I had one lady say I'm repulsed by meat and I don't want to be repulsed by meat. I'm like, probably low stomach acid, you know, or exactly missing digestive say. enzymes. Yeah. Like that's the place where I start people is like, you probably got some low stomach acid. And so I am so much more like lifestyle, light, you know, all the things you and I talk about and then tackle the food because I don't want to alienate people, number one. And I don't want to make this seem like completely unattainable too. Um, and I do think light is just such an important factor for people that they just kind of are like, I want to do the diet. It's like, yeah, yeah, you can, but <laughs> the diet only works with the, the light comes first. It has to, it always has to. And then with the diet, even I typically don't address the, what I have the W's of the diet. I say the wet, the window window, yes. the when mm -hmm. in the window and then the what, right. Yes. So it's like Agreed. first and foremost, Agreed. right like eight to 12 hour window, right? Mm -hmm. Starting with breakfast, mm -hmm. having lunch, like distinct meals. So the when yes. is distinct meals mm -hmm. and then you can address the what, but so mm -hmm. many people, by the time you get to that point, like that's lower, that's further down the line. By the time we get to that point, it's like you've addressed morning light. You've addressed blocking mm -hmm. artificial light. You're likely taking a UVA walk. Mm -hmm. um, you're hydrated we, because we've talked all about hydration and mm -hmm. uh, you're blocking the EMFs or you're at least more aware of them and they're not on your, you're not doing wearables anymore. They're not, right. The Wi-Fi is off when you sleep. You've got blackout curtains. Maybe you're doing a red light therapy or a sauna or cold mm -hmm. plunge or a combination of those. And then you are, you're eating what you would consider to be your quote unquote normal diet, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you're doing it in a really specific way. Way, that that one of the last things I'll address is the what, and because so much mm -hmm. can shift in the process of getting there. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like it's it's just a matter of like getting these big big things very consistent in your life, and then if you want to switch the food over. So I've when people that were reaching out to me a message, I'm vegetarian or I'm vegan. Can I still do your program? I would first I would be like, well, no. Now I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you about the nutrition portion. Cause the nutrition portion of my program is like one day out of 21 where I'm like, this is what I prefer. Here's the food list. This is what I think is optimal and do this. But if you want to just take day one, leave it and continue with your diet, I think the rest of the program is going to help you feel better. You're going to see improvements by following all the other things in this 21 day program, there's only one, one day where I talk about the food. Um, and I do that on purpose because it's important. It's a building block, but it's not the foundation of the entire thing. Right. Totally. Yep. Totally agree. With yeah. That. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want that. Like I try to remove barriers to entry for, yeah. for getting into this. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so if, if you, if, if you want to maintain your eating pattern, you can still, you can still start to implement so many other things when, yeah. when it comes to the light and the, the non-native EMFs, the grounding. I mean, yeah. so I would, I would say if that's a barrier, if that feels like a barrier to entry, then do all the other things instead. Exactly. Exactly. Cause I've had a lot of people, they feel so much better just from implementing these things. It's the people that honestly, and I've had people that do the food perfectly because they think that that's all important. The only important thing and um, they're like, well, I'm not really seeing the improvements that I want to see. And I will say, let's go through your quantum day. And they're spending 30 seconds out in morning light. You know, oh, that's mm -hmm. all I can make time for is 30 seconds. And I'm uh, a hairdresser in front of a ring light all day. Um, and I can't get breaks to go outside, but I'm eating a perfectly strict you know, carnivore diet and I'm, but I'm in front of this ring light all day and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't take a break. And I'm like, 
that's a problem. You know, like, I don't care if you're eating like the most perfect diet in the world. And by the way, I think carnivore is only appropriate cyclically for most people. I don't think it should be a full-time thing. Um, but if you're doing that, you're just, yeah, you're not going to feel good. I would feel like complete crap if I was in front of a ring light for 10 minutes, you know, <laughs> I do all of my camera in front of a window. Like I don't, Damn, I try to I use know. as little artificial light as possible. Like I have big windows. I'm up in my bedroom because Sarah's using my office. If I'm in my office, I've got the two big windows. Like I try not to use those ring lights and my computer screen is like red. It's on Iris and I got a little window open and so, yeah, I think that that's something that people miss is like, they just want to do the diet and they kind of think all this other stuff is ancillary. And, you know, I have not eaten perfectly over the last year. I've had a really stressful, this year has been like one of the most stressful years of my life. I might at one point, at some point in time, once we figure it out, talk publicly about it. But, you know, there was a point, my daughter was in the hospital for a full week. I mean, loaded with a non-native EMF and artificial light and just like- well, And the worst, stress, right? Having your kid the in the hospital. The stress of having your kid in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I still, even then, was able to get outside at those appropriate times, do some grounding, take sunlight breaks, switch off with my husband, come home, do some sunbathing. Like, I think the sunbathing and jumping in my cold tub during that time was just like saved me uh, from completely going over the edge and losing my health. And um, yeah, it's, there've been a lot of stressful things going on in my life, but it hasn't made, I, I haven't been feeling bad. I still actually feel really good. Like, am I stressed? Do I have emotional worry? Yeah but my body is doing great. And I know that if I had been through this kind of year that I've been through, um, let's say five, six years ago, it would have taken me out. It definitely would have taken me out. Um, so that's why I'm such a huge believer in this stuff. And my daughter was in the hospital. What did I eat? I ate a freaking crappy hospital food, like a couple of days. Like I Mm -hmm. had onion rings, God forbid, with seed oils on them. And (laughs) And I lived. <laughs> well, and it did have you doubled over in pain. <laughs> it didn't have me in pain. I didn't feel sick. It was just like, I'm hungry. I'm stressed out. I'm just going to eat these onion rings and chicken fingers and um, I'm okay. You know, it, mm-hmm. it didn't make me sick and didn't make me break out. Didn't like give me eczema or bloating or gas the way it would have years ago. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I think what, what I'm hearing is that th- this lifestyle also builds resilience. Resilience. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can handle those stressors. So the emotional stressors don't necessarily weigh on you physically in the same way. Yeah. And even the physical stressors don't weigh on you the same way because you have the capacity to clear it. Right. Now, one thing I think that pairs so well, and at some point we need to get Irene on here, right, is mm. nervous system support. Yes. Because yes. if you're doing all the things and then there still is something that that feels like it it needs support. Nine times out of ten for me, I look to nervous system support. Mm-hmm. Right? There's mm-hmm. there's either been some type some like traumas all throughout, like little traumas all throughout your life, or there may, was maybe some in utero trauma, or a big some big traumatic mm-hmm. events happened, or heck, there's transgenerational trauma that I'm finding mm-hmm. so interesting um, oh, yeah. learning about. And so, especially if there was some trauma between you know in utero and age seven years, that could really it really runs some subconscious programming um, that might prevent you from getting to where you want to be. And so I love nervous system work. And so that's one I don't think gets enough, enough highlight. And I think it pairs so well with this quantum health stuff. I agree. Yeah. And I mean, Irene is a dear friend. Like I've had her on speed dial the last few months of like, oh, she's like, no, you know what to do. I've been through her programs. And so yeah, during all this stuff, yes, I'm doing the quantum stuff, but I have the nervous system work and I do that too. Like I'm constantly like orienting, feeling where my body is in space, taking a moment. I'm still meditating daily taking time to just do all these things that I know to care for my body. You know, it's people just want to look at things as like black and white practices. I have, um, spiritual practices also, Energetic, you know, spiritual. energetic. Um, there's a lot of other things I do to care for myself and they fit in with this whole, um, connected 
uh, thing that we're basically talking about connection with the light. There's a connection with the spiritual field. There's a connection with all of that, the nervous system. And it, I think it all works synergistically. And so, um, I don't like to separate things out that way. I think that, that we heal as this like whole being, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's so true. And so, um, yeah, let's get, let's get Irene on here and talk about yeah, that would be stuff. fun. That would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a lot of great stuff. So yeah, maybe we'll bring her in and chat about that because I think, yeah, anytime she's been on my channel, it's been hugely successful. Lots of great feedback from people who are like, okay, I think this is the thing that's missing for me, you know, and Probably. I've seen a lot of great success stories. Yeah. I know that doing her work was a big part of me, um, for pre-pregnancy also. I think that was really, really right. helpful. Yeah. Well, you know, think about the trauma of a infertility and then, uh, uh infertility alone, but then, you know, spending all that money on oh, in yeah. vitro and things like that, right. or just the trauma of like having to put your body through the process yes. of uh, getting ready vitro. for, you know, yeah. right. It's yeah. It's so yeah, for sure. For yeah. Sure. I used a lot of her stuff, even just like going through pregnancy because I was like, I've lost babies. Like, am I going to lose this one? And I had to like do a lot of that nervous system work through the pregnancy. Otherwise I was just like constantly like trying to chug ice water to make sure he was moving and just <laughs> my husband would see me with it. the ice water and he's like, Oh, again, are you worried? I know. And <laughs> Fine, mom. I'll just kick and punch you more. Don't have to put the ice water. in. <laughs> James was very, very active in utero. I was blessed. And he's a very active little boy now. I mean, good Lord. Um, but I was lucky that he was very active in utero. Um, I have just so many videos of my stomach, just like, you know, like the crazy, you know, cause the doctors are like, well, just make sure he kicks 10 times every two hours. And I'm and like, like, every 10, 10 times, seconds. every 10 minutes, like <laughs> yeah. that's basically right. where we're at. Like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that work with Irene is super supportive for people too. Um, cause we, you know, we want this magic bullet. And I think when people come to quantum, they come to this lifestyle that you and I talk about, they're like, this is it, this is the bullet, but yeah, I just want to open it to Yes, it's very foundational. It's very helpful. Um, but you still have to stay kind of connected in these other ways as well. Well, sure. Like, you know, for example, I still like getting massage. I think that's highly oh, yeah. beneficial. Oh, I yes. think acupuncture can be so Love wonderful. It. I think homeopathy is a beautiful yes. modality. Chiropractic care, so key, right? Mm -hmm. And so th that's again too. I think we need to like we want I want to make sure that we're being very clear when we talk about this, the stuff that we teach we find it foundational. And then when we layer those other things on, they're that much more supportive. It's not like those things are, are bad, bad or harmful or not yeah. useful or silly. And sometimes you need allopathic doctors too. Like, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's why I feel like we should do a whole episode on that because I think we feel guilt and shame sometimes if we have to rely on um, allopathic doctors, but they are there in these, like with my daughter, like she almost died. And if I hadn't had a doctor, we didn't have the ICU, we didn't have the hospital, like we wouldn't have her today. And right. so there are situations where you need uh, modern medicine to help save a life. That's what they're there for. Our, I think my issue, and I can't speak for you, is just people that are looking to this modern medicine model to deal with all these other issues that we talk about, like the gut issues, the sleep issues, it's not the great for chronic health. anxiety, yeah. the, like the chronic health issues. I think that's where people kind of go into that system and end up worse off and um, not if for it not being helpful, but there is a, you know, I think there's a place for it for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yeah, no, it would be interesting to get a couple of these other complementary people on at some mm -hmm. point to, to, to oh, just yeah. be like, especially ones like Irene, who I know also does oh, yeah. circadian practices. It's like, oh, yeah. is, so, you know, potentially having a nervous system based practice that's dominant. Mm -hmm. How do you weave in circadian? What do you mm -hmm. find beneficial for circadian and quantum with circadian and quantum health? I think that would be really interesting for people to hear. Definitely. I love it. Cool. Well, anything else you want to add to this one? No, I'm I'm happy. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we will see you next week. Bye.